Hello and welcome back. I've had a little bit of a play since the last video in that I've installed the hard drive controller card here in this slot here and I've hooked up the hard drive from my 5160 in unknown condition and I did try this earlier actually and I got nothing but a lot of flickering on the hard drive LED uh, when I first tried this uh, prior to fixing the RAM and uh, you know all those bits and pieces that uh, I did earlier and had no luck but this time I've got some luck and I've got a bootable hard drive so I'll just uh, fire the machine up and you'll be pleased to know that I've also set the shutter speed correctly on my camera. Yeah, so probably less likely to get all that flicker, but it, it's still not 100% perfect. I've got the frame rate at 50 hertz, which matches the 50 hertz PAL signal to the screen here. Uh, but you can see there's still a little bit of flicker, but it's a lot better than what it was. So I'll just uh, jump cut to the boot there. Okay, that's the floppy drive initializing. And I can hear the hard drive. And we should be able to see the LED flashing there. That's booted already. This has a menu on it <laughs> called and it's labelled welcome to Kenny Wheeler's menu if you're watching Kenny I've got your hard drive here uh, don't ask for it back but you know I've basically cleared all the information off there I left the menu behind and yeah I won't go into the menu there I'll just F10 out to the DOS there well hard drives having issues making a weird noise Oop, there it, goes. it seemed to have sort of jammed up a little bit there not sure what was going on there anyway we've got to a DOS prompt here and we can do a DIR on the hard drive so another thumbs up it's got a hard drive working it's got the system's got Norton Utilities on it it has a Lotus 123 some networking software anywhere I'm wondering is that would that be PC anywhere I'm not too sure there's a data folder I've uh, wiped out the menu yeah so it's a fully booting system of you know hard drive and floppy drive now which is great so now I'm wondering if I should mount the drives button it all down make it look good and uh, start using the machine it seems to be reasonably reliable uh, one problem I did find is the number two on the keyboard here number two is not working I don't know why uh, if I go to numlock see I'm getting eights there nine seven six five four three no two one a and the two feels it feels not responsive it, I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm going to go in there and have a look uh, it's a bit of a pain because some of the uh, games I think will use that as a cursor key that's a down arrow cursor key there uh, so yep I'd like to sort that out that is a problem I'd also like to clean the keyboard so and give the machine a general clean as well so I'll go ahead and install the drives and I might just give the machine a cursory sort of clean there and it'll make it look a bit better than what it is now and um, run some software see how we go didn't really take too much notice of this earlier but when I was putting the case on here I noticed that the panel's missing here 
If we take a look at my other IBM 5155 here, if you're not familiar with these, there's this panel on the back here that you can just lift and push back like so to reveal the power connector, your power switch and your connections on the back there. That just nice and tidily folds away. Apparently these do fail. Little clips on uh, the hinge here I think fail but this one seems to be in pretty good condition here. Yeah, so that's a thing. It's not really a huge deal, but uh, yeah, just something I noticed later on. Okay, I've screwed the case on here. We just, oh, she's pretty heavy. Oh, I've got my keyboard from my other IBM, the one we just looked at before. Uh, it's not missing the little latches here, and it's number two key works on this one which we'll need because I'm going to look at playing some games now you may notice a little problem here and I kind of did have to do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get the hard drive in here and it's not in properly it's about the best I could do because if we just take a close look there you'll see that it's sort of sitting out uh, from the front cover there and the reason for that is that this was too wide this is not the hard drive for this machine this is out of my 5160 and this here this front panel is too wide to slip in from behind down through the rails so I had to take the cover off I pushed the drive through just far enough to get a couple of screws and to hold this you know reasonably well here it's just a temporary solution i'll probably look at uh, going back to like maybe a double floppy system with this machine considering this is not the drive for this machine and if i get my 5160 running uh, i'll be using this drive in it i may still run into issues uh, with getting you know double floppy because this drive here i tried to fit into this position here and it also is slightly too wide uh, it's not by much, uh, but I definitely don't want to be sort of, you know, filing any edges off a perfectly good drive there. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what I'll do there at this stage, but um, we've got this temporarily in here. This um, floppy drive fits nicely. That's the original one from the machine. I would say that is totally original. That's the one that came with it when I got it anyway. I did mention I've got some games and I do have Rail Ride Tycoon here. It comes on the five and a quarter inch floppy disk format, but I've actually copied it to the hard drive. So we'll have a wee play with that. I've got a driller, a couple of things to try. I do have other uh, DOS games as well, but um, they're, they're probably just the, the main ones we'll take a wee look at today now that this machine's up and running. And let's see what we get here. It's the hard drive initializing there and I'll jump cut um, to the end of the count up RAM we've seen that plenty of times okay I'll just F10 to exit the DOS there Okay, there we go, and I transferred Ms. Pac-Man onto this machine as well. I think I put it in a games folder, yep, I did. Ms. Pac-Man. Okay, uh, now you'll see it's looking a little bit dull here, and if I go F2 for options and if I select monitor which is F8 you can see here it's set to RGB if I go F8 it changes it to composite and then I might just change the key layout here uh, so change keys to C and you can see it's 
a lot brighter now. Uh, so that's the composite video. Uh, so press new key for up. Up, down, left, right. F1 starts the game. This game is a little bit fussy in that if you don't hit the button exactly at the intersection, well, uh, it can, instead of, you know, let's say you're traveling across and you want to go up there, if you don't hit up in the right, exactly the right time, the gap, you might end up uh, heading back the other direction, which is pretty annoying. Like that. Yeah, so I went to come down here, didn't quite time it right, instead of down, she went back. Uh, which is different to the arcade, you know, the arcade would sort of buffer that, the arcade version. Yep, like that, so yep, you've got to be very accurate. Ooh. I don't quite get that dot. Can I win this? Ooh, risky. Oh. <laughs> there we go. So that's Ms. Pac Man. Runs fine perfect game for this sort of machine okay so let's restart now that's cold boot so we don't have to do the RAM count up and it should just boot straight into DOS there from the hard drive well the menu anyway yeah Okay, CD rails. Oops. Okay, and it's game. Yeah, I think the the EGA here you need 256k of RAM, not sure what this adapter is capable of, the Hercules in here, but I found that this runs on the CGA 4 color, so I'll choose 5 there, and this game is not really recommended to play on a system like this, it's pretty slow, the screen being monochrome is not ideal, but anyway, let's have a go here, we've got IBM sounds there, keyboard only and I think at one point it appears to be stuck doing something here but eventually it does load. Just having a real good think about it. Good old PC speaker, eh? Pretty hard case. You can see the screen's not as clear as you'd expect. 
Uh, not quite sure, you know, why it doesn't. And you'll notice some of the text is not all that clear as well. Uh, let's see, escape on that. There's the design team. Okay, so let's start a new railroad, Eastern USA and Vesta. We'll just go with the defaults here. You can see that text here is not very readable. Probably something to do with the display option. Uh, now when I say this machine's not ideal to play this game on, uh, this is one of the reasons, because it takes an age to uh, build the map as such. So we're adding mountains here at the moment. It's taken a little while. And then, you know, it's got to add the cities and the resources. Here we go, coal mines, lumber. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in a hurry. And, uh, you know, I thought a 486 was borderline for playing this game. Was it a 486 or a 386 I thought was borderline? I can't quite remember. It's quite playable on a 486 actually. It's probably borderline on a 386. It's not exactly smooth. Okay, world complete. Okay, press key. And then our shears will be up for grabs here. 100,000 shares of stock sold to local investors. Okay. Ah, now that I know is a challenger. Yep. So in the manual, this is the copy protection. In the manual, you'll see the different locomotives here. And you just have to identify and name the right one. We take a look in the technical supplement here. We've got our keyboard commands. So regional display, I think that's what we're looking at now is F1 uh, area. So if I just scroll, this is the cursor as such here. We just head up to uh, one of the big cities. Let's go for New York. I think this is New York up here, isn't it? Pretty close to it there. And if I F2, that's uh, effectively a zoom in. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Um, okay, let's try F3. So that was area display, doesn't seem to work. Local F3. Just here, little flashing cursor. F4 is the detail display here. Bridgeport, so not quite. My geography isn't too good. New York, there we go. Right, so you know, let's build a track between these two cities. Okay, shift, uh, single track, shift S. So if I go shift S and then use the cursors, do I? No. Shift S and then the cursor, illegal track. Okay. Oh, are we on a river? Yeah, see, it's just a little bit unclear. There's a river here. So I'll start my track over this side of the river. Shift S up key. Okay, here we go. And can we get across this river? Right, bridge. Yeah, you can see here it's not very readable either. Wooden trestle or a stone. We'll go for a wooden trestle. 50,000. <laughs> Building the bridge. Eventually. Yeah. The 8088 processor is not ideal for this. <laughs> oh, I love this.
you can skip this but why not watch it Looks like the guys are doing a little dance here. Okay, there's the bridge built. Uh, so if we head north west to Bridgeport, uh, shift S up. Uh, is that going to be? Okay, uh, station, I want a station there. But do I want my main station? Does it build my? Ah. Uh, I don't think it really matters, but I'll bring my cursor back down to New York here. Uh, F8. Here we go. Another build process. Oh, build track. Whoops, I just overshot. Wasn't watching. F8. Here we go. Let's put in a station at 100,000. I think that says one car per year of passengers, six cars per year of manufactured goods. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. See, this text here looks perfectly fine, but if it's the text is, uh, a bit, if the text is sort of overlaid on um, a, a background as such, you know, like a darker back background, it doesn't look that great. Okay. That's good. Right, let's get the other station built. F8. Oh, I thought it was going to go through some big station building process there. It doesn't do a lot. Okay. Lots of demand here. Supplies mail and passengers. Um, okay, so I'll start with a passenger train. I won't play this for too long. I'll just show you at least setting up a train. Okay, and if we go build new train F7, you must own an engine shop F7. Okay. I'm assuming when you build your first station that there's an engine shop. Yeah, okay. So that's the grasshopper is the only option. Here we go. Okay, here's our grasshopper. We'll choose a mail car. Uh, I think you can skip these animations as well. And a passenger car. And I think we'll leave it at that. Just two carriages. This engine's pretty gutless. Uh, so just no thanks on that. <laughs> uh. Okay. 
yeah, you get the point. It goes all the way off the screen there. I think escape, yeah, okay. So now it's asking where we want. Uh, so there's only two stations, it's easy, right? No changes, so one mail, one passenger. Pick up one of each in New York, deliver to Bridgeport. Pick up one of each in Bridgeport and deliver to New York. So that's good there. Um, just escape, I guess. And we've got our train. Yes. Two carriages out the back here. Get you in closer there. <laughs> Still a little bit flickery, isn't it? But it's the best I can get it. Okay. And we'll have a similar thing for the passenger inauguration, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Uh, now, speed. I think you can change the speed. that what's it doing now it hasn't blown up already is it that train oh no new railroad company okay as you can see it's pretty slow but even on the recommended system, which I think, what are the recommendations for this game? Um, let me just have a quick look in the technical supplement here. Oh, so the display, just while we're there, the display, you can pause that if you like, take a quick look here. I'll read that to you. The simulation requires a color monitor with an IBM CGA, EGA, M CGA, VGA or Tandy 1000 graphics system. Uh, EGA systems must have 256K on the graphics card, standard on all but the earliest releases. The simulation will not run on a system with a monochrome monitor. Well, yeah, you can see why they don't recommend it, it'll run. Is it technically a monochrome monitor? Oh, the monitor's monochrome, but the graphics card? I mean, it was supporting composite and Miss Pac-Man, so yeah, I'm just not 100% uh, au fait with the uh, Hercules adapter there. If you're using compatible graphics card slash monitor, it must be 100% hardware compatible to the one to one of the above. You must have IBM or Microsoft DOS version 2 or higher. A version between 2.11 and 3.31 is recommended. 3.1 or less on 512k machines. So we've got 640k here, we're lucky. Right, uh, I think by the time I find the speed, ooh, the train might have actually got there. <laughs> I'll quickly uh, show you some of the documentation that comes warranty registration <laughs> we've got uh, these player aid cards here quite handy right let's go up here and see what's going on we're about to arrive we've got 479,000 in the bank there It's October 1830. Here we go. Albeit very slowly. What have we got here? Ah. Okay, so I had no mail on board. 
did I have any passengers? Did I get anything out of that? Should have had some passengers, surely. Yep, so you can see you wouldn't want to be in a hurry. Four thousand for my first passenger delivery. Three passengers picked up in New York, delivered to Bridgeport, distance twenty miles, speed twelve miles per hour. Revenue four thousand. There we go. Uh, so yep, that's uh, Railroad Tycoon on the IBM portable PC. <laughs> Not recommended. Okay, driller. I haven't played this much at all. The first time I saw this game was on the Spectrum. And yeah, it didn't really play out a lot even back then. Uh, but it does run on this machine again slowly. So the specs it recommends IBM PC and compatibles, DOS 2 or later CGA or EGA. There's a controls here we've got a manual and we have this little map it's a little map card here so it tells you to affix tab E affix A there oh yeah so it's a sort of, what is that, hex, hexagonal, three-dimensional hexagonal shape. I don't know, it's making some funny noises. Let's try that. There we go, that looks better. What do we do? Enter. Driller security name, okay. Leslie Skerritt, mission classified. Re Federation briefing. Page 32, this is the copy protection. Page 32, energy. Energy. Okay. Keyboard only. CGA, yes. Spacebar begins mission. Okay, controls, O and K, forward and back, left and right, Q, W, Q, W, O and K, right. It's slow, but you've got to remember this is running on an 8-bit processor, well it's 16-bit internal the 8088 uh, with an 8-bit external bus so you've got to bear that in mind through a door here and we're being fired at I think oh I'm hitting the wrong button uh, left and right slightly I think we can shoot these right fire zero Now, how do I look up, look down, P and L. Uh, not entirely sure what the objective is. Um, it's back. But I know that it's pretty easy to die. <laughs> now where am I? What? Oh, I'm looking at the ground, am I? Yep, okay. We can go through here. Look, that's up and down. Joystick would be handy. 
in fact I'm pretty sure the 6 pack plus has got a joystick port can't quite remember now I'll have to have a look at that we can go in here and sneak down this little alleyway here and I guess you can fall off the side I'm not sure haven't tried it uh, but anyway that's that's driller you can see it's it's not too bad it's probably playable I would say uh, not sure how it compares to the Spectrum version as far as performance is concerned but I think that's probably quite playable it's just a matter of getting your head around the uh, keyboard you know the key combinations the movement and whatnot yeah there's the alleyway back uh, so let's just commit suicide here we drive off the edge yep <laughs> so there's driller <laughs> not sure how to quit am I still oh I'm actually still active am I can you oh you can still target what ah oh. did I end up oops I hit high accidentally there not sure whether that was to get into another screen and then I escaped I don't know anyway that's driller I'll, I think I'll leave it at that at this stage um, but as you can see the left 4 dead IBM portable personal computer the 5155 is pretty much fully operational uh, there's a couple of wee things I want to do I'll be using this hard drive in another machine so I'll probably put another floppy drive in here if I can fit one in I've got this is the battery out of the six pack plus I need to replace that I'll try and get the real-time clock working I would like to uh, see if I can get a joystick up and running yeah but I think it's pretty much where I, I want the machine it's uh, it's a fun little machine and I'll be having a little play to see what sort of games I can get running on it so yeah I might do the odd other little video but um, yeah that's pretty much it I guess for the series I might tack a few on the end uh, but yeah that's pretty much it for this one and thank you very much for watching